Welcome to Learning with Lee, where we discuss nature and wildlife on Kiowa Island. I'm your host, Lee Bundrick, Land Preservation Coordinator for the Kiowa Conservancy. Today we are going to talk about one of the animals that is close to the hearts of many in Kiowa and most other coastal areas, the sea turtle. Lynn Sager is a resident of Kiowa Island and is helping protect our sea turtles through her role as the permit holder and volunteer coordinator for the Kiowa Island Turtle Patrol. Hi Lynn, it's great to have you with us today. Hey Lee, great to be here. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? I was born and raised in Massachusetts, went to college in Massachusetts, taught health and PE, and I coached a high school gymnastics team. We have four children and we now have four grandchildren. And when our second son graduated from the Naval Academy in 98, he was stationed in Charleston. So we came down to help him move into his new place. And we spent the weekend at Kiowa and fell in love immediately. That year purchased a piece of property here on Kiowa, but we were not full time yet. Couldn't wait to move down here. And sea turtles was something I always wanted to work with. How long have you been volunteering with the Kiowa Island Turtle Patrol? Since 2002, when we became full-time residents, when we bought property in 98, it had to be a full-time resident in order to serve on the patrol. So it sounds like the uh, Turtle Patrol has been here for quite a while. Uh, how, how did it get its start? It actually got its start from two college students during their summer break back in 72. Rhett Talbert Jr. and Tom McKee, they received permission from Mrs. C.C. Royal to do this project to learn about loggerheads and their nesting habits, then approached what is now DNR, and they got a small stipend of money and a vehicle, and they began the program then, and we've grown from two people to 257 volunteers participate in the program. Who sponsors the Turtle Patrol? The town of Kiowa Island, we are fully funded by them. They allow us the use of one of their vehicles during nesting patrol. They buy the t-shirts. They provide the funding for any materials that we need during a season. How many volunteers do you usually have per season? It changes because we've opened it up to people who are vacationing. If they will commit a week's worth of volunteer service, then they can join our nesting patrol. So we have a lot of non-resident and part-time people that are now participating. What are the different species of sea turtles that you can find on Kiowa Island? Well, the loggerhead by all means is the most prevalent here in South Carolina, but we have had leatherbacks lay a nest a couple of times years back, and we've had greens. To my knowledge, we have not had a green nest. When do you see the nesting season begin on Kiowa? Officially, the season begins May 1, and it goes through October 31st. However, last year we had the earliest nest in the state on April 26th. We didn't get our next nest until May 6th. How many sea turtles do you typically see during the season? It seems to be more and more. Way back in the early days, it was rare to see one. But last year, I would say at least a dozen were spotted, and I'm probably on the low end of that estimate. How many turtles do you usually see nest on Kiowa each summer? Last year, we had 611 nests. The year before that, we had 393, so it varies. It depends on when the loggerheads reach maturity. At 25 to 30 years old is when they first lay a nest. Last year, we had several new nesters, and it kind of gives us great hope. 25 to 30 years ago was the beginning of the serious conservation efforts being made to protect the sea turtles here in South Carolina. So we'd like to think that we're seeing some results from the work years ago. What is the process for establishing a turtle patrol program in South Carolina? In my particular case, 
Joe Pizzullo, who you know ran the program for years and years, was retiring. He made a recommendation that I replace him. I had to interview with the town. Then it was approved, and I apply for the permit each year through DNR, and they issue that permit that gives me and the rest of our volunteers the ability to work with the Sea Turtle Protection Program. Are there any guidelines that follow with having a permit? Oh, there sure are. Number one, you have to agree that you're going to abide by DNR's established guidelines and that you are going to have all of your volunteers do the same. Every volunteer signs a volunteer agreement form stating just that. It's worked out well. I think people understand that we don't call the shots, DNR does. How does someone become a Turtle Patrol volunteer? It's very easy, really. Just send me an email, a text, a phone call. We also instituted a program a couple of years back called Shadowing. But if people are here on vacation, but they don't want to commit an entire week every single morning at 6 to 6.30 a.m., they can come out and shadow any of the teams on any of the zones. Because once the season starts, the beach is loaded with turtle patrollers. I understand the Kiowa Turtle Patrol is broken down into two different patrol groups the nesting patrol and hatching patrol. Can you tell us how these duties are separated between the volunteers? Nesting patrol is at the beginning of the season and the truck has a driver and a team of four to five individuals in the truck. The truck is loaded down with nest posts, with short stakes, with rakes, flags, screens. They enter the beach at Beachwalker Park and drive as far west as they can, depending on the tide. And then they turn around and head east. They investigate every single crawl. Some crawls are a false crawl. Some crawls end up being a nest. Some crawls, they don't find the nest cavity, but all involved agree there's a nest there somewhere and they couldn't find it. So they short stake it. That way, that area gets watched for the entire season. We take a GPS reading and we mark down on the nest cards the mile marker. Each zone is one mile long and it includes five different mile markers. For instance, zone eight is mile marker 35 to 40. Now in hatching patrol, those folks, once a nest is laid in their zone, their zone captain schedules teams of generally two, and they check each nest every single morning for signs of predation, for sand doming, for loosening the sand over the nest cavity after a hard rain, and they look for signs of emergence, which would be the tracks and the depression. So that takes place every morning. Sounds like the volunteers have a lot of great opportunities for hands-on experiences and being able to work with sea turtles in their conservation. How have these efforts support uh, sea turtle conservation? Oh, in several different ways. One of the things, every turtle patroller carries a recyclable bag with them for picking up trash. So the trash is cleaned up off of the beach. And by educating the public to let them know to stay back and behind a sea turtle if you encounter one crawling ashore. She gets spooked very easily and could turn around and go back out to the ocean without laying a nest if she sees people too close to her. So if you stay behind her, she doesn't have the chance to see you. She can finish her crawl, dig her body pit, dig her nest cavity, lay her eggs, and then people can get pictures of her when she's crawling back to the beach. We've had to educate people on that because a lot of people will see her crawling ashore and right away go to the front of her to take a picture. It's the worst thing that folks can do. They don't realize it, they just don't know. But once they do know, they seem to have the respect for the sea turtles 
and they comply. We have indications that the turtles in the ocean are increasing in numbers. They haven't increased in numbers to the extent where they can come off the endangered species list, but it's a very good sign that they're headed in the right direction. And I think all the efforts on all of the beaches with Turtle Patrol folks is helping to improve that situation and their numbers. What are some of the issues you see impacting the sea turtles on Kiowa today? Definitely global warming, uh, climate change, the oceans are warmer. There is some concern by scientists that there may become an imbalance in the sexes because of the continuing warming of our beaches. When a nest is laid on a beach, the sex of the hatchlings is determined by temperature. Eggs at the bottom of the nest would be much cooler and would become male hatchlings, whereas the ones closer to the top of the nest will become female hatchlings. And the way we remember which way it goes is with the expression, hot chicks, cool dudes. It sounds like there's a lot of concern about the reproduction of sea turtles. I understand that there's a genetics project. Could you tell us a little bit about how it works? Absolutely. The genetics project is handled out of the University of Georgia. Turtle patrols, typically when they find a nest, will take one egg from that nest. Now, if an egg gets broken during the nest finding process, we use that broken shell. We clean it out very carefully and insert it into a test tube that has preservative in it. We label it with the nest number. And surprisingly, they are able to determine which female by the DNA on the inside of the shell, which female laid which nests, how many nests she's laid in a season, and on which beaches she's laid the nests. So we've come to the understanding through some of this work that we used to always say sea turtles have to imprint on their beach so that they come back to that beach to lay their nests. Well, they do do that, but they also lay nests on other beaches as well. So it's more of a regional thing as opposed to a beach specific thing, which we used to believe years ago. So we on Kiowa, we have grandmothers, mothers, sisters, daughters, and granddaughters all laying nests here on Kiowa. And a couple of years back, we had one sea turtle that laid five nests in the season. One was on Kiowa, one was another beach in South Carolina, one was in North Carolina, one was in Georgia, and one was in Florida. What is the geographical range for the genetics project? The genetics project encompasses the states of North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Northern Florida. And that's why we're able to find out because this genetic material is coming in from all of these beaches. That's how we're finding out where each turtle lays her nest. How have sea turtle populations changed as a result of the turtle patrol's work? We're actually seeing increases in numbers of turtles. They're not increasing enough to take them off the endangered species list, but DNR is very encouraged by that, and it's on all beaches. We would like to attribute the fact that their numbers are increasing due to the nest protection work that we're all doing and the education to the public. I had the opportunity to shadow some of the Turtle Patrol volunteers last year. It was very exciting. How does someone participate in this type of experience? The town has a Google Sheet on their website, and we are able to post, the zone captains will, will post a nest number, a location number, nearest boardwalk, approximate time when a nest is going to be inventoried or opened up and the contents are counted. It has been a tremendous success. I love it because it cuts down on the phone calls that I get. Jim Jordan loves it, it cuts down on the phone calls he gets. 
when we get into inventory time on Kiowa. And the public loves it because they have immediate access to that information. They can make it to several different inventories in one morning if they pedal their bikes fast enough or if the inventories happen to be close enough to each other on the beach. That's something that's been a huge hit. How can our viewers help with sea turtle conservation efforts on Kiowa and elsewhere? By respecting the fact that the only reason a sea turtle crawls on the beach is to lay a nest. And anything we can do to help her accomplish her task, if it means staying behind her, don't take pictures until she's crawling back out to the ocean, you have plenty of time. It's a long process. And if people will understand that, leave their plastics and their styrofoam at home, not leave holes on the beach that hatchlings or nesting females could get stuck in. People are digging and digging and digging all day long. If they would just take the time to also fill those holes back in before they leave the beach, because it's generally at night or in the wee hours of the morning that the turtles either come to shore or emerge from their nests and we just don't want to have any of them get trapped in a hole. How is the current pandemic affecting the Keel Island Turtle Patrol? Well, Lee, as of right now, we are not authorized to do any work in regards to the sea turtles. South Carolina Department of Natural Resources field work has been deemed unnecessary in the state. And therefore, by extension, our work is deemed unnecessary. So as sad as everyone is about this fact, there are no permits issued as of this date. Hopefully that will change before the season is over, but we don't know. It's an ever fluid situation. Every day brings more information. But as of right now, we are regular, everyday citizens that are not allowed to approach, feed, harass, or touch an endangered species. That is federal law and there are fines associated with that. And as hard as it's going to be for us, that's just something we have to accept for right now. Like I said, we hope this will change before the summer is out. But because of that, there won't be any postings of nests, there won't be any postings of inventories until and when this stay at home order and unnecessary field work order is reversed. Thank you, Lynn, for joining us today to discuss sea turtles and the Kiowa Island Turtle Patrol. Well, thank you for having me. I could talk about turtles all day long. Join me again next week for Learning with Lee.